Welcome. This video is on binary coded desk. This is part of our series on representing numerical data inside a computer. Specifically, binary coded decimal is a way to encode decimal numbers in binary. This is an alternate way to use our bits to avoid moving from base to base. Why would we want to avoid that? The short answer is loss of possible precision. In fractional numbers, and you deal with different bases and go back and forth between them, you can lose precision when going from, say, a binary number to a decimal one or a decimal number to a binary one. For example, and just to make this a kind of really clear example, if you think of the fractional value 0.3333 repeating, in decimal, this is a third, right? And this is one of the, the simplest repeating fractions, which denotes that that repeating value never ends. There's no actual concise value there to express. However, if we were to take the same number and express it in base 3, it would actually be 0.1, and it would not repeat because the weight of the first digit on the right side of the radix point in base 3 would be one third. We can express one third concisely in base three, but not in base 10. These differences when dealing with fractions between bases do lead to loss of precision. If we encode our numbers as decimal numbers inside binary, then we avoid this lack of precision. To do this, we need four bits to store a single digit. If we have eight bits or a byte, we can store two decimal digits with a range of zero to 99. So for example, if we were to store the number 42 as binary coded decimal, it would be 0100 in the first nibble or four bits and 0010 or a two in the second. Now note that the number 42, if we were to use eight bits to explain Express 42 as just a binary base 2 number, it would be 00101010. Notice that they are two different values. They are not the same 42. So remember we just said that if we have one byte, we can express two decimal digits with a range of 0 to 99. But remember if we have that same one byte and we are expressing pure binary unsigned numbers in base 2, we actually have a range of 256 or 0 to 255. Notice there's a big difference here. In in fact, we have lost more than half of the range that we had in the equivalent just binary straight number. So why this difference? Well, remember that we said we use four bits to express one decimal digit, and a decimal digit only has a range of 0 through 9 or 10. Because of that, we've gone from a range of 16 values that could possibly be expressed in 4 bits in base 2 to 10 that could possibly be expressed in base 10. We're simply ignoring A through F, and these values are essentially lost. Now, there are some ways we might be able to put them to work that we'll look at in a little bit, but generally speaking, these values are lost. They're, they are useless to us. When you add these differences up by adding more and more bits and losing that precision over more and more bits, the differences in ranges becomes larger and larger and larger. For example, if we have binary coded decimal number that takes up 32 bits, our range is 100,000 or 0 to 99,999. However, that same 32 bits, if it was expressed for a pure unsigned binary number, has a range of 4 billion. So from 100,000 to over 4 billion is quite a big difference. Let's take a moment now to look at some other numbers expressed both in regular unsigned binary and binary coded decimal. Here we have the number 68. So in binary, we have 0, 1, this one being in the 64's place, 0, 0, 0, a 1 in the 4's place, and 0, 0. So our total there is 68 because we have 68 plus 4. In binary coded decimal, notice we have the first nibble representing a 6 and the second nibble representing a 4. Because this number is within the range of 0 to 100 or what we can express in two decimal digits, it just so happens that it's also the same range required to express it in binary. So for this example, we can express the number with the same number of bits in either circumstance. However, 
If you look at our last example here, 255, which is also the largest number we can express with eight bits of unsigned binary. In unsigned binary, it's 1111, or all ones. And in binary coded decimal, notice that we need an extra nibble or another four bits to express 0010 for the two, and then 0101 twice for the two five. Let's also see how the range plays out over a different number of bits. So here we have from four bits, which represent one decimal digit, all the way up to 64 bits, which would represent 16 decimal digits or 19 binary digits in the binary range. Notice that while our differences are small for one digit, we have a 0 through 9 versus 0 through 15, they go up quickly as we noted with 8 being more than double the difference, and then all the way from there to 10 to the 16th versus 10 to the 19th which is quintillions. So when do we use binary coded decimal? And I guess a bigger question is, is it even still used today? The answer is we generally use it whenever the precision of the numbers that we save, especially fractional ones, is of the greatest importance. So for example, your bank might use this to store your bank account and to deal with transactions to it. This way it is not going to lose any difference in loss of precision when it's doing the arithmetic. Most desktop and mobile computers today do not normally use binary coded decimal. In fact, on the Intel platform, it was supported in the 32-bit instruction set architecture, but it was not extended into the 64-bit. The other interesting place that binary coded decimal is used is in calculators. Some scientific calculators use binary coded decimal also again to maintain precision. At the end of the day, it's become a very specialized tool to fix a very specialized problem. And the reason why is because it takes a lot of overhead to actually do it. And we're going to explore why in this next part. Let's start by looking at a multiplication problem. Let's say that we have to multiply the number 76 by seven. And in decimal, we can do that quite easily, and we know that the answer is 532. If we were to do this arithmetic in standard base 2 binary, it would look like what we have at the bottom of the slide. 76 is represented by 1001100, and the 7 is represented by 111. We would multiply this out, taking the 1001100 over three different levels, adding them all up, and coming out with the number 42. If we want to tackle this in binary coded decimal, the key is, is that we have to do each part of the equation one part at a time. And for every part, we have to double check that we haven't exceeded the decimal digits that we can represent in the nibble or the four binary bit. Now, what this means is that we're actually going to have to do the arithmetic step by step, meaning if you think about a multiplication problem, a multiplication problem is really just multiple addition problems. So if we were doing six multiplied by seven, we're really going to be adding seven to itself six times. For each addition, meaning after the first seven plus seven, we would have to evaluate the result and re-encode into binary coded decimal if we've exceeded the amount of value we can have in any place. So to see this, let's take the first iteration of our problem. So if we take seven plus seven in binary, we have zero one 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 plus zero one one one. Notice that because we're only dealing with one digit, that the numbers are the same in both binary coded decimal and binary. Because it's binary coded decimal, the number should not be larger than a nine, so therefore it's represented the same way. Now we have here a seven and a seven, and we know that gets us a 14. In binary, we represent that in base two as one, 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 zero. But the problem is since one, 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 zero, is larger than the single digit decimal range, meaning it's larger than a nine, we have to reconvert it to legitimate binary coded decimal. The way that we do this is by adding a six to it since that's the amount of digits that are missing. So we take our 1110 and we add in 0110, which is a six, and that gives us 10100. Now, notice that if you split this into nibbles, and I know that we're, we're missing some padding on the left hand side, but if you take the right hand four digits and separate out the one on the left, you have the number one and four, which is in fact the binary coded decimal answer that we require, which is 14. The next step would be to add the next seven in 
and rinse, wash, and repeat. This is a little bit easier to look at if we map it out a different way. Here we have the entire multiplication problem, expressed one step time. On the top left, we have 0111 plus 0111. These are the first two sevens that we just talked about. When we add them up, we get the 14 in binary, but it's greater than the value 10 in that nibble, so we have to re-encode it by adding six back in. So we add in our 0110 as we discussed last slide, and that gives us the result 101. One, zero, zero. When we split that into two different nibbles, we can see that we are in fact left with the value 14 in binary coded decimal. Now we can add in our third 7, so we take our 14 and we add in a 7. We end up with 00011011. Now that value is 11 if we were to look at it in base 2, and again that's greater than 10. So we have to add a 6 back in. So Doing so re-encodes us into binary coded decimal. So now we have 0010, 0001, which in fact is a 21. And we can see that's correct because we know that 3 times 7 is 21. Now we're going to add in our fourth set. So we do so and we end up with 0010, 1000. Now, interestingly, this is 28. And note that it is OK. We did not exceed our digits in the right-hand place, so we do not have to re-encode into binary coded decimal. We're already there. Now we have to add in our fifth 7, and we do so ending up with 00101111. Obviously our 1111, which is 15, is too big, so we're going to add in 6 again to re-encode. We do so ending up with 35, or 00110101. We add in our sixth and final 7, and we get to 00111100. Again, the 1100 is 12 and too large, so we add in another 6, and we get our final encoded result of 01000010, or 42. Now this is how computers deal with binary coded decimal. And as you can see, there's a lot of extra steps because at each step of the multiplication process, we have to evaluate the result and see if any of the digits are larger than a decimal encoded value can be. If they are, then we have to add 6 in to get the correct result and then continue on. As humans, though, we know how to operate and think about things in decimal. In fact, we're quite good at it. So we can take the numbers and encode them ourselves. So here's an example of doing that. In this case, we're going to take the numbers and lay them out in binary coded decimal just like we did before. I'm going to note decimal numbers that they represent next to them. First, we can multiply the 7 by the 6. Now this was already done in a previous slide, so it got brought down here. But you can see in the black text under the equal sign, we have 42 as the result. Now that we, we have that result, let's look at just doing the 7 times the 7 without breaking down each repetition. So how can we as humans kind of manage this? Because we know how to work with decimal and, and look at our binary numbers and encode them ourselves, we're going to know that 7 times 7 is 49 and we can write out the result in binary coded decimal. So effectively we're going to convert our 7s from binary to decimal, do our multiplication in decimal to come up with the number 49, and now take the number 49, and instead of bringing it back to regular binary base 2, we're going to take it and bring it back to binary coded decimal. So we're going to write out 0100 for the 4, or 1001 for the 9. Notice how I line them up because this is multiplication and you still have to move over one place uh, when dealing with the second multiplication. Now we're going to add up the two multiplied numbers. So we have our 42 and our 49 and we add them up. So you can do this with straight binary arithmetic if you look at the, the digits. So here there's nothing under here so we just bring down the 0, 0, 1, 0. Here we have to do some adding so by 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. This one there's nothing up here so again we just bring this down and we have our final part here. Now the issue though is that we have to look and flag ourselves. We mentally have to do what the computer would do if any of the nibbles exceed the value of a decimal digit. So in this case we have 1101 which of course is a 13 and too large to be represented by a single digit. So the way that we fix that is to 
break it out into the correct places and add it back in. So we take our result from here and we move it down here, breaking out the 13 into the two different places, adding in the one in the left hand place and keeping the three where it originally was. The result is now 5, 32, which is the answer that we wanted to have. So binary coded decimal in itself is a way of encoding the numbers, but we might want to do a little bit more than that. Let's say we want to represent negative numbers or we want to have a decimal point. Remember, the real value of binary coded decimal comes because we can avoid loss of precision that happens when we move from one base to another. So what we're going to explore here is a format called PAC decimal format that uses binary coded decimal. This is something that's been used in languages like COBOL for many, many decades. The important rules to remember is that the most significant bit is always stored first. Now we'll look at this in an example in a moment. We also are going to store the sign, meaning is this a positive or a negative number or possibly unsigned in the low order bit at the end of the last byte. We do this for a couple of reasons, which we'll explore in a moment. To denote a value of positive or negative, we're going to use 1100, which is a 12 for positive, 1101, which represents a negative, and 1111, which represents that the number is unsigned. Notice that we use these values because they're all greater than 10. These are unused values in the, the number system that don't have another purpose. Doing it this way means that we can easily find the end of the number. We know that if we ever encounter one of these numbers, a 12, 13, or 15, that we've encountered the sign and we've reached the end of the number. In this way, we don't have to specify exactly how big the number will be ahead of time. We're also going to have the decimal point at a fixed location that's defined by the programmer. So while we don't know the size of the number ahead of time and how big in storage it will take up, we do know what's called the points of precision or how many decimal points we're going to store. The decimal point will be fixed and that's actually defined in the program by the programmer who's writing. They get to decide if they're going to use two decimal points, no decimal points, 10 decimal points. That's completely up to them. But once they set it, that is the fixed amount that is going to be used.